Do you like my YouTube videos? If you do, please leave a comment and actually click on the like button. And if you want, you can hit subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all my YouTube videos. Hey, and go ahead and click that bell icon to be notified. Thanks. Take care, guys. What are we doing in today's video? Once again, the title spoils everything. So it doesn't really matter. We're going to do some maintenance on the turtle tank. Now, you know I have a huge filtration system. You've seen it in other turtle videos. If you haven't, guys, go and take a look. But you still need to do maintenance. What I'm not going to do is clean the filters. I clean the filters twice a year, and that's it. Because I want the bioactivity, this, uh, all the live bacteria that's in the filters to do their job. But when you have that, it's still important that you do drain the water about 20%. I do it about every month. And then you add some fresh water in, and then you re-put some chemicals in to uh, clean the tap water. Uh, because I have turtles, I use things like Sludge Destroyer, because remember the turtles poop in here. So I want to add some extra bacteria that will help break down the solid mass that they leave behind. That way it can be sucked into the filter and cleaned out. So I leave all my turtles in here. Nothing is going to affect them. They're, they're super friendly, so they're all at the front. Kwame's hanging out up top. So everyone's here. Uh, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take a siphon right here. And it's going to go in the turtle tank. And I'm going outside. And I'm going to suck on the end of the tube to create a vacuum. And we're going to drain about 20% of the water. Now, if you look, one thing to note here, you'll see the water line is about here. So it's drained. That's about how much through evaporation and the turtle splashing and the air mister there that's just about how much naturally comes out and that's why i only have to do this about once a month is because i'm naturally always adding in a little bit of clean water every week but it's important to drain it down so we're going to drain it to about here then we're going to add some fresh water and then we're going to treat it so first thing and um, let's get to siphoning okay so the siphon's in the water i leave a couple inches from the bottom i'm going to go outside and we're going to get this vacuum started so here is the end. I'm lower than the turtle tank. I'm outside. We step down. We step down again from the porch. So I'm going to just create a, a vacuum on this end. And uh, then you'll see the water flowing out. You may be wondering, how good does it taste to create a siphon like this? It's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. It just tastes like plastic. Uh, I, I clean out the tube with the hose before I do this to make sure you know I'm not sucking in any gook. And then you can easily see, I use a longer tube, that way I can easily see when the, the water is coming. So we're just going to let this siphon. So a question people will say, well, why does the water get dirty? Well, come on, guys. Why does it get dirty? Like, the turtles live in here. So one thing they're doing is they're eating, right? And if you feed them in their turtle tank, if you look, look at the little bits breaking up and stuff. Like, their food is going to obviously get in the water. And it's the food has, you know, whatever. This food has fish meal, chicken meal, corn, all the stuff mixed into it. So that's going to get in the water. But then let's get to the most simplest thing. They poop and they pee in here. So although, yeah, these little bits of particles, they spread out and they, they go along the bottom for sure. And the turtles will eat the larger chunks of it. But these little flakes like this, they're going to get pushed around and they're going to get put in the filter. And although you have a filter and it's working you know, you're still going to get some bacteria build up. So what do we do? We just siphon some water. We retreat the, the water with the correct chemicals to clean the, you know, lead and fluoride and all that crap that they put in our tap water that they want us to drink, but is bad for all the animals. Then we want to help the biological filter that's going on by just giving it better bacteria. So this isn't a big deal to do at all, and it's really good for them. And, and while they're eating, the siphon's going, you know, so we can already see the water level is dropped, and it's doing pretty good. So we're just going to continue to let it to drop, and then they'll be done eating by the time it drops to where it needs to go. Then I'm going to use the hose. We're going to add some water, and I don't have to worry about temperature because although it's cool groundwater, there are heaters in here, and we're not adding a lot, so it's not going to drastically change the temperature. Oh, look, you can see Johnny Cage in the background moving around in his tank. See him right there, guys? He's just getting down off his hammock. Now he's looking at us because I said his name. Oh, boy, he's mad. 
But yeah, so we're just going to siphon, and then I'll get when we're adding the water, we'll be back. So let's talk water treatment. And yes, we can use Simba's tank as a backdrop right now because he's sleeping in my bed right now, all stretched out. So we don't have to worry about him coming and being annoying. Because when we do fresh water or even salt water, when we're doing anything, we need to do some treatment, okay? So we're, we're gonna break down all of this stuff. What are they used for? Why do you need it? And then there's even other stuff I'm not gonna go into today, but just know if you're ever in question, you can do a water test kit, which I've shown before, which is really easy to do to, new, to go over what you need to add. Um, but what are these for? Okay, we're gonna break them down one by one and we're gonna start with the easiest things. If you look, oh, API, right? Yeah, their stuff's really good. I like it, although there's one of these products I don't like and I use from a different person. But Tetra and all these things, they, they all do a lot. So the first thing is this stress coat plus here. This is probably the most important when doing anything. Makes tap water safe because it removes the chlorine. It detoxifies heavy metals. This is important. If you're on city water and not on well water, so if you're on city water, they're putting in chlorine, they're putting in fluoride, there, there's metals from the pipes, leads, all that other stuff. We're going to want to detoxify that that's in the water because it's not good for your turtles or your fish. This is Stress Coat Plus because it also has some uh, aloe vera and things like that, which is actually really good to heal the skin of the turtle and keep it nice and healed. So that's the Stress Coat Plus. It's really easy. These bottles, guys, they last a long time because this is these are concentrated formulas. So their caps are measuring things and it will tell you it's like it you use very little like there's someone you're setting up a new aquarium when to use how to use but also someone you're just doing like a weekly uh, catch up which is nice but if you look it's like add five milliliter per 10 gallon so there's the five there's the 10 so um, it's a hundred gallon tank so for 10 so I'd add 10 of these or five of these so if you're looking five capfuls that's nothing with this big bottle. Uh, so that's the stress coat. It's really important. Now, quick starts and stress zyme. We're going to start the quick start. Quick start is exactly like what it says. It allows for the instant addition of fish. These are live bacteria, including right here, contains live nitrifying bacteria, all natural. Um, so, you know, when you talk a bioactive tank, whenever you're doing fish or even turtles, you're supposed to get your tank established first. You're supposed to run it with no turtles in there to get bacteria in the filter that will eat nitrates and nitrites and ammonia and it will keep the turtles and fish nice and happy. Well, if you don't have that time or you wanna add them right away, um, you can use Quick Start. That's also why when you clean filters, if you clean the filters bone dry, I'll do a video uh, next time on cleaning filters around the winter time, guys, because there's a specific way. You don't want to clean everything spick and span, but you can add some quick start. Live bacteria that will help the bacteria uh, grow. Typically, you'll have some type of filter mesh to grow bacteria. Um, sometimes they're plastic balls. They have all type of uh, filtration media that the bacteria will grow in. So as the water's going through, the bacteria eats all the bad stuff. Strethzyme. So again, contains live bacteria. It's gonna consume sludge. This is really important for turtles because turtles poop a lot and their poop goes in the filter and you really need for turtles, if you wanna keep a clean water, no smelling tank, you want bacteria that will clean sludge. So there you go, simple. It's just again, it's live bacteria that's gonna help clean things out. Now, the product I don't like. Turtle Sludge Destroyer. Same thing here, right? We have uh, bacteria, breaks down organic waste and debris, so excess food, but or, uh, excess poop, okay? And specifically, if you look, this one actually has a turtle on it, and it actually says it's for turtles. So it's a more concentrated mixture supposedly that is going to break down their waste and stuff this does not work well for me this 
Fluker's Eco Clean All Natural Waste Remover. And again, there's a turtle, and it's almost like the same turtle, but from a different angle. Um, this works well. Billions of bacteria and enzymes for fact, effective waste, and sludge removal. This stuff to me works really good. So I try things out, guys, and that's how I want to be able to recommend for you. But I've tried out this product. I've tried out this product. This product for me, for my tank, for my filters, cleans the poop and the smell and keeps it away a lot better. So they're both eight fluid ounces. This is a thinner, long one. And sometimes, guys, you can get this as being blown out on Amazon for like $2 a bottle. So I stock up whenever it is. Um, they do expire, supposedly. But if you look, you know, you're looking at like three years, good to go. So let's add some water, let's add some bacteria, and then we'll show you the tank. So when I'm doing my weekly water addition, I just use like a five gallon Home Depot bucket into it there. When I've got to do the water change out, I like to use water from the hose. And I do let the hose run a little bit first to you know clean out any bacteria or stuff that may be growing in the hose. Why do I like using the hose though and this is important when doing the big water change one is it does a really good job of aerating the water although i have a bubbler right an air stone which is really important this is just does a really massive aeration it's going to pump in a lot of water it's going to stir up that water so that's really good um, and if you guys don't know the air there's certain bacteria that can't live well in air so by aerating your water with turtles, even though they don't breathe water or air from the water, it actually prevents bacteria from growing, which is good. Sometimes I think it's cool too because the turtles will come and get pushed by it. The other reason is if, I, if there was a little area on the side that maybe was a little dirty, I could use this hose and blast the water off. And the last one is this water is colder. Even though I do run cold tap and I'm just running more. So in the summer here, the heater never needs to run in the fish tank. So I like to cool the water down a couple degrees, which will trigger the heater, getting it to run and just, you know, making it so the heater doesn't stay stagnant for six months out of the year. That's all. This also could alert me that maybe the heater is not working if I just see the heater doesn't turn on because I have thermometers in the water. And if I see it's cold and the heater's not turning on, then I know I can replace the heater before it's too late. So, Look at all the turtles. They're just in here checking out the bubbles. We're going to pump the water in and then we're going to treat it. Here's a nice thing. Another last tip. Because it's pumping in a lot of air, the filters are sucking in air. So if you look, there's air bubbles being pushed through the filter. That's not a bad way to break up stuff that's inside your filter in between cleanings. Is to have it sucked in a little bit of air with that water. All right, I've added all but the last one, the Fluker's uh, Eco Clean. I'm gonna add it now. Now it does the same thing where you can use the cap to measure, but I'm so good. I've done this so many times, guys, I just eyeball it. There we go. Um, and what's important, guys, do not shut off your filters. Let your filters run because this bacteria that we just added it's going to cloudy the water a little bit when you first add it all because it's concentrated here. You want it to get pulled through 
the filters because you want the bacteria to live inside the filter. So here's all my turtles. There's Jubilee, April O'Neil here. She's getting huge. Obviously there's Big Bertha. She's 16 years old, 16 years old. Jubilee, she just turned 11 years old. Kwame turned six years old. These guys are two years old, two and a half, almost three, but they're doing good and they want to eat my fingers and that's not going to happen. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. You can say goodbye to the Turtle Power Group. Take care, guys. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.